Hey everybody, in this episode of Game Terrain Engineering, I'm gonna show you how to make the Dark Crypt. For this project, you're going to need a cube-shaped cardboard box this one is three inches on a side, and I got it for a dollar at Hobby Lobby, although you can get them online, as you see here, and I've also seen them at Michael's. When the crypt is glued together, the bottom portion of the cardboard box is going to be glued onto the lid, like this. And because of that, it's going to be very hard. There's going to be a slight lip around the edge. And it's going to be very hard to paint that with a sponge and get the stone texture that I'm going for. So for something like this, I'm going to go ahead and paint these parts individually and then do the sponge painting to give them the stone texture. And then I'll start assembling. The black paint is dried and now I'm going to use a wet sponge to give it a stone texture. I'm using graphite which is a very dark gray. I'm hoping actually that it'll turn out looking nice but we'll see. Now with with my wet sponge, um, I've mentioned this in previous videos, I like to, I, I don't like the square shape or, or circular shape if you cut it that way. So I just trim the edges and I, I put some nicks in, in here with the scissors just to give it some damage. And I also tend to wipe off a lot. I don't like a lot of paint on my sponge, mainly because when I have done the, the, dry, the uh, wet sponge technique, um, I, I, when I first started doing it, I was putting way too much on. So I've learned to just go light, take as much as you can off, and then if you don't like it, you can add more. So let's see what this looks like. Also, one other thing, when, when this is glued together, you could glue it like this, and that would give more surface area here for the glue, but I'm actually going to glue it like this, and mainly because when the roof is put on, there will be a slight gap um, where you could see in from the side, and I just want it to be, I want it, the, uh, the color to be consistent. To create the, f the eight columns that are going to go around my crypt, I went out to Thingiverse and I searched under columns and I found this one. I really like this one. And so you just go down here, you click on the thing files and you click on the name column STL to download it. It's under 25 megabytes, which is the maximum uh, file size that can be downloaded or imported using the Tinker Tinkercad tool. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the column. And here in Tinkercad, you can ignore these three for right now. I want to show you how I got to this stage. So go to Import, choose a file. I choose Column, which is the file I downloaded. And choose Import. Now this is going to take, I don't know, it'll take 30 seconds to a minute. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you, you may notice that these columns are half. They're cut in half. And the reason being is I'm, I only need half the column so that I can glue, glue it onto the main body of the crypt. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import a full column and show you how I cut it in half and also how I sized it. Now if you look carefully, you'll notice that these three are slightly different lengths. They go shortest to longest. And that's because I'm going to do a test print of these three and I'm not going to print the whole thing, just the first few layers. And I'll peel them off and then go test them on the box to see which one fits the best. But for now, I just want to show you how I got to the, got to here. So here's the column as a 3D as a 3D object. 
I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag so that grows the column, all the dimensions um, at the same rate. And now I just need to cut it in half. So I'm going to move it into one of these grids. If, you, if I zoom in here, you'll see that it's in the corner here of one of these larger grid sections. Now I'm going to drag a box out here. I'm going to increase its height. And if you're not following what I'm doing here, my third video shows in greater detail how I use Tinkercad and a lot of these tools for sizing and, and cutting and things like that. So watch that video if you need um, to see more, get more detail about what I'm doing here. But basically I've just created this box here. It's a whole object and it's bigger than the column and I'm gonna drag it to the halfway point right there. And I can go in closer and look. It's close enough, yeah, that's close enough. I could use the arrow keys. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm not getting it right where I want, I can come down here to see where it says snap grid. I can decrease this from 1 16th of an inch to 1 32nd. This is the this is sort of the snap to distance. So I'm going to choose 132 and now it, it moves in slightly smaller increments. So that looks perfect. I'm going to rotate around here to make sure it goes all the way through. It goes all the way to the top. Then what I'm going to do is select the whole object and the column like this. Choose group and it will cut that column in half. All right, well, let's lay it flat. Well, it'll let us lay it flat, and let's lower it down to zero height above the work plane, right the right, come on, right there. And now I can just, hopefully, yeah, now it'll work. Now I can rotate it 90 degrees. Not sure what happened there, maybe a little glitch in Tinkercad. So if you click an object and you hover your mouse over one of these little white boxes, it'll tell you that the length and width and you can see that this is 2.848 inches tall. And I measured the box, and the, mo the box is right at two and three quarters. Uh, it's a cube-shaped sh cube box. So what I did was I resized this to two and, two and, uh, to two and seven eighths. And the reason being is I want it to be just slightly taller than the cube, the main body cube. But Again, the measurements are a little wonky because that, that box isn't a perfect cube. So what I'm gonna so what I did was I created copies of the column and I just sized them again so that they're just a little bit longer. This is the short version and this is the full three inch version, three inch in height. i I'm pretty sure this one's gonna be too tall, but I, I wanna have it as a test. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna download this file. I'm gonna do an export and I choose STL and I save it to my computer and then I'm going to take this file to my 3D printer and print out three test columns. If when, Once I find out the height that I like, I'll come back in and I'll make eight copies or seven copies uh, for a total of eight columns and I'll print all eight out for two per side of the cube. Beneath the roof, this uh, section is called the gable. It will sit on top of the cardboard box like that. There'll be a matching one on the back, and this is what the roof will go over. It's basically um, two and three quarters width this way. There's a one eighth uh, lip, uh, not a lip, a little gap right here. And then the uh, this is a seven eighths peak, seven eighths inch peak and you draw the lines here. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm basically gonna duplicate this and then cut it out for you.
here. I found this bag of skull beads, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pair of pliers. I've tested this, so I know it works. Um, I've got a bunch of beads, so if this doesn't work, I'll just do another one. But basically, I'm, I'm gonna split this in half, and I'm using this plastic box here to catch the fragments. But I wanna split the, there we go. I split the skull in half, you can see that? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to push it down. Here's the gable that I cut. I'm going to center it and just, well, feeling a little clumsy today. I'm gonna to try to center it and then push it down with some force into the foam, made the indentation. And that's where I'm gonna glue this little skull. And I've got two of them here, so I think that's gonna look, that's gonna be a really cool little uh, addition to the crypt. And I may still do something with cardboard or maybe some, some little uh, beads or something on the side. It looks kind of plain, but that's what I'm gonna do with the gables. So I figure I'd tackle the gables right now and add some embellishments uh, to the left and right of the little skulls. And for that, I'm just using a, a thin piece of cardboard here. This came from, I think, a Ziploc bag box. And I'm just gonna cut out, um, I'm just gonna cut out a small piece and I'm going to fold it in half, and the reason being is I'm going to create, I want them to be roughly the same size. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to shave off the end here. I've still got two pieces. I'm going to eyeball that, all right, like, do, 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 like that. And then what I'm going to do is just simply cut an angle like that. And hopefully, yeah, you can glue that on there like that. Glue that on there like that. And all it's gonna do is just give, give it a little bit more of a 3D element, something extra to paint, something that if you give it a wash, it'll have some shadows. I could even go a, one step further, which I think I am here, and I can make a smaller one. Let's do that. Let's go, let's go like that. So now I've got two very tiny triangles, and I could glue them on top like this, and just, again, all I'm doing is just giving it more, more depth, like that. So I'm gonna create another set for this one, and then what I'm gonna do is use some black um, paint mixed into Hot Mod Podge to seal these before I paint them. Now that the gables and the columns are painted, I'm gonna use some super glue to go ahead and glue the columns all around. And then I'll use the protrusion of the columns to help me place the gables. The distance between the front of the gable and the front of the back gable is three and a quarter. I want a one quarter overhang on each side, so three and three quarters. I've measured a piece of cardboard three and three quarters, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Right. 
Now, what I want to do next is uh, measure the, I know roughly how long I want the roof to be. It's going to be roughly, let's see, I did this, two and a, it was two and a quarter right there. Two and a quarter. So two and a quarter, two and a quarter, four and a half. So I want to cut this at four and a half. And I don't want to bend this cardboard uh, too much. I don't want a crease in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it at the two and a quarter mark. I'm gonna try to find uh, something that I could bend right here. And the easiest way to do that is just to get something that's uh, sort of solid. I'm gonna use this book right here. I put that on there and I'm just going to sort of give it a curve like that. I don't want to do a hard crease. So I'm just bending it gently like that. And fit it over here. And I'm gonna look at it, and if I think the overhang's too much, which I don't, I think it's perfect. See that? Right here. That's the overhang. And so now all I've gotta do is paint it black, give it the same uh, sponge, sponge painting as this, and I'll be able to put the roof on. For the door for the crypt, I am going to be using one of Fat Dragon Games' 3D printed models, or 3D printable models, and it comes from expansion set number 9, and the expansion set number 9 is $8 on their website, and it's this particular door right here. It's got a stone surrounding, it's a wooden door with metal plates and a round handle here. Um, I printed out the one inch version and it looked a little funny it was a little too thin so I went with a one and a half inch version after printing it and mounting it to the crypt or test fitting it it's too thick it just looks kinda awkward in in between the columns so what I've done is I have imported the door right here into Tinkercad and I am going to cut it in half by dragging a box on here, turning it into a whole object. I'm going to increase it in size here. And I'm going to put it over half the door right there. See how it's cutting the door halfway? And I need to expand it this way a little bit. All right, there we go. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm going to group both the door and the whole object. And that will slice the door in half. There we go, all done. You can see the back of it and the front. So I'm just gonna go to export, STL, and download the file. There we go, time to 3D print.
I have the gables and columns glued onto the crypt. Um, the crypt is going to be glued onto the base, as you can see here. But I want to turn this over. When it's centered, I want you to see that there's going to be a portion of the columns that overhangs the base. Um, that's not a problem. I knew that was going to happen because I've made these before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how I'm going to fix that. So I've got a piece of half-inch foam here, and I've cut out uh, a square in the shape of the base. The base will fit down in here like this. Now I'm going to use a hot wire cutter to trim these edges and give them a rocky surface. And I'm also going to paint it, obviously. Um, but again, when the crypt is glued onto the base, you'll notice that there's a quarter inch gap between the bottom of the columns and the half inch here. So the way I solve that is I'm going to cut another square out of quarter inch here. And this one's going to be given sort of a beveled, uh, a beveled uh, edge. It, it will be glued down over this and it will be then be flush with the base. Um, it will also be painted uh, natural stone and it will be glued on top of here. And then what will happen is the, the, crypt, the crypt will be glued here. You'll have a slight beveled um, rocky surface here and then a steep rocky uh, edge um, that will finish the the look. I'm going to start with the larger base and I'm just going to give it a rough stone edge here. Basically you just saw through it. Sorry I'm out of focus here. Just keep going. And let's just keep going. All right. Now I'm going to glue the crypt to the base. I'm going to use some super glue here. All right. I'm going to try to center it. Next will come the door, and I'm going to glue it on this side. I like this side better. Okay. 
I've got the base done up. Uh, I gave it a, uh, a light uh, coating along the, most of the raised edges with some very light gray using a sponge. And now it's time to place the crypt into the base. To do that, I'm gonna use tacky, tacky glue again. Push this down in the center, just like that. Perfect. Look at that. One crypt completed. And that's it. That's how you make the dark crypt. As you can tell, I went with the clear faceted fake gem for the top. These other ones that I had, they were just too small for the space. This one fits perfect. I hope you liked this one, and I hope you give it a try. If you do, post a photo. I'd love to see it in the comments. I'd love to see your take on this. But this one was a really fun one to make. Remember, it all started with just a simple cardboard box. Now, I did 3D print the door and the columns, but if you don't have a 3D printer, in the next video, I'm gonna show you an alternative method for creating the door and another, uh, another option for creating columns if you don't have a 3D printer. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.